happening, everybody? TC here with Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, SMKW.com. Today I've got Jim McNair in the studio. We're not on video call this time. Yeah, all right. We've got a lot of new knives, Jim. A lot of new stuff coming out from Kershaw and something from ZT as well. Now, without further ado, let's light it up. Let's go ahead and talk about this ZT. Okay. Um, so this ZT fixed blade, that was the one thing that when I opened this knife roll, so we, we got these samples in last Friday, and uh, I opened this knife roll, um, and I was like, whoa, what is that? <laughs> um, because that one was the one that caught me by surprise immediately. Yeah. And uh, so this one is a fixed blade, G10 handle, um, Kydex sheath here, and this is really cool and something a little bit different for ZT. Absolutely. So let's talk about this one first and yeah. uh, go over the specs and 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 what okay. this one's all about. So this is it's interesting you said that because this is something kind of different and yet a little bit familiar for ZT because what this is meant to be this is the ZT six and it's meant to be a bit of a spiritual successor to the ZT nine. Now if you remember back in the day when ZT started as a brand, one of the first knives we did was the ZT9 bayonet. Yep. And they're they're amazing. I've I have a I have a buddy who has two of them. He loves them so much. That was immediately what we said when we got this and, <laughs> and looked at this. And Greg goes, Do you remember the bayonet? I was like, oh yeah, the nine there. Yeah. That, yeah, absolutely. So but there were a few things about the bayonet. I mean, if you hindsight being 2020, it was a quarter inch thick blade. It was seven or seven and a half inches. It right. was a, it was a it big was massive. knife. Yeah. And it had that it had that big that big steel mechanism on the end of it. And so they were just, they weren't something you really wanted to carry around and use. They're, they're an amazing conversation piece. They're super cool. They worked, but I think this is a more usable size. Yeah, this, so, is, this is fantastic. And uh, it's coming in with 3V on the blade steel. It is, yep. Um, so very ser serviceable. Now, what kind of coating is that on the blade? Um, so that is a clear Cerakote. Okay. So it, it, is, it, it is a heavy bead blast and a clear Cerakote. So you get that, it almost looks like gray PVD. Yeah, it, it really does. Um, but it makes it a really nice solid mat. Yeah. And exactly. it's going to be a really great coating for that 3V since it's not stainless. Exactly. Um, it's going to be perfect for keeping that, especially as durable as Cerakote is, yeah. for keeping that blade from rusting on you there. Yeah. And that is a baked Cerakote, so it will yeah. be as tough as it can be. Yeah. Um, th that was a big thing for us is it's, it's going to be, we, you want to use the right steel for a fixed blade. So yeah. you want to use something like a 3V or M4, something that's, Tough, holds a great edge, and yep. you know, non stainless steels just do that really well. Yeah. But the average person doesn't always want to oil it up every time they put it away. Right. And so, yeah, we're really happy with that and the way the coating turned out. Um, so, this again, being a little more traditional, we have a steel cross, a steel, um, steel guard on it, and we have a steel butt cap. So, it adds a little, adds a little bit of a traditional feel and yeah. kind of like an old fashioned fighting knife style. It does, yeah. Um, it puts, it puts me in mind of like a, like a, like a USMC fighting knife, for example. Oh, absolutely. Um, and then we have the G10 handles with with the uh, with the OD green color and that kind of heavy texture. So it's 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 deceptive because it's not so heavy that it rips up your hands, but it, right. it's something you could you could still get a grip on with gloves. It definitely uh, it embodies confidence. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. And the the lockup in this sheath is really really good too. Absolutely love that. So we worked really hard on that. Because that was one of those things where that that we have a we have a primary and a secondary retention, and that that primary retention on the first prototypes we did of the sheath, it was where well, you you'd, you'd be trying to pull it out and then you'd be yeah even with the even with the thumb break here you you'd end up kind of pulling it up in your armpit and so we right. got that to a place where it doesn't really shake out right but um but but it's but it's easy to release and it's easy to get out again very intentional thumb release here yep. for you that you can yeah. just press. I mean, it, it just works great. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a nice pancake style. Also, one thing that I love about it is, you know, if somebody wanted to, they could take this mounting system off and right. use one of the myriad of, you know, universal mounts yeah. with this Kydex sheath and it's yeah. still going to work great. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to scout carry this or something like that with like an ulti yeah. clip or you know, something something of that nature, or wanted yeah. to do it even inside the waistband. Yeah. It's still going to work. 
And this is meant to be a simple, robust sheath. It's, yeah. There's not a lot of bells and whistles, but we do have we do have the, the holes so you can put lanyards through it and things. You could, yeah. you could lash it to something. You could, we have the slots and the holes in it. And the other thing about it is that the way this clip mounts, you can do a higher low carry, so you, have, mm -hmm. you can drop it down to the other set of holes, and you, it's all re completely reversible. Yeah. So for the lefties out there, you can also carry it left-handed. Um, but keeping it relatively simple, nice, sturdy, heavy-duty webbing on there. Absolutely. And, and yeah. of course, with it being 3V, this part right here is very important, having uh. that drain hole. <laughs> um, yeah. Because, you know, so many people out there are going to forget and not wipe their blade off, and they're going to yeah. put it in wet. So, Or, you know, yeah. even if they're out in the rain, having a way Absolutely. to drain the moisture out of that uh, out of that sheath right there. Yeah, you do kind of important. funnel it in there a little bit. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is a fantastic offering. Super excited for that one. Yeah. And folks, also, all of these, we didn't mention before, all of these are going to be released mid-January. Yep. Um, so this is the first release of the year from Kershaw. Um, super excited to see all of these. Now, where do we go from there? Where, what? Let's see, are we sticking with U.S. or are we going to move on to some other stuff? Let's, let's stick with U.S. now. Okay. Um, so next up, and that was the most surprising and the most eye-catching right off the bat. The next most surprising and eye-catching was this one right here. Yeah. So this is, this is a little bit different and a, yeah. a little bit outside the norm for Kershaw. Yeah. Um, and their USA, USA factory right there. So this is an OTF auto. It is, yes. This is the live wire. <clears throat> so I finally got my little ACDC reference in there. Yeah. Um, so the live wire, as, as you've stated, is, is our first OTF. And this is something we spent a lot of time on. We're so excited to release this because it's been, it's been a lot, long time in the making. But um, the live wire, as you can see, is a double action OTF. Um, we worked really hard to keep a decent blade to handle profile to keep it so it's not a real wide handle, really skinny blade. Yeah. Um, and the the most notable thing about this is is the is the feel opening and closing it. Oh man, it, it's I, I tell you what, super easy, super smooth, and really light considering. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's just you're not going to hurt your thumb <laughs> like yeah. you will with some OTFs, um, and it just feels really, really good in the hand. Lightweight on the handle, um, 20 CV on the blade steel, which is a phenomenal option. Um, you know, and, and I've talked about this before. Uh, 20 CV is is not viewed the way it used to be because it's it's a little bit older of a blade steel right. now. But as far as I'm concerned, it's still up there in the top three as far as blade steels are concerned. There's really just not a lot um, else out there that does what it does. I mean, it just does everything so well. Yeah. Um, it's it's just a great combination blade steel. Yeah. And uh, the look of this blade, it's really reminiscent of some of the launch series, yeah. um, like the launch 12. You know, uh, in that in that vein there. Um, and really, really digging this design. I also like the pocket clip too. The fact that it's not straight up and down. I like the angle on the back end there. Um, well, and again, it's, it's so difficult with these knives to make them unique. I mean, that's something I think anyone who's worked on an OTF project will tell you is that there are certain things that work, there are certain things that don't. We, we went into this with all kinds of plans. Like, we're going to make it super different. We're going to do all these things. We, we actually, um, this is a collaboration with Matt Diskin. Yeah. who um, is just known for making so many cool double actions and has a real mind for mechanisms. And so we worked with him, and we also, our, our Kershaw Originals team also, I mean, I, I've got to give a shout out to our, our particularly our R&D our manager who just spent years just pulling his hair out, getting this to function and to work right, because it's, OTFs are just, it's, it's, it's the sum of a bunch of little things yeah. that make these work well. Exactly, and, and to be durable enough to do what you want it to do, yeah. um, but still d be able to function the way you need it to function. Yep. Um, and I tell you what, how smooth that button is and how it's very lightweight, but it doesn't feel cheap. No. It, it, it feels substantial enough that you're like, man, that just feels like quality. And it, it's not lopy coming out. It's, it's yeah. got a nice positive release. Yeah. Absolutely. So, for for example, like this is this is one of our earlier production prototypes, and you can feel the difference on that one. That's just not it's not bad, but it's not that right. And this one, we we tested this. That, that's something that you know part of why this took a little longer. Is we went out there and we 
went to a lot of people in our building, people with, and particularly people with smaller and weaker hands, and we said, can you open this? And we still had some people that couldn't. Right. And we've gotten to the point with this one where I, I like to tell people we have a, our receptionist actually has arthritis in her hands, and she can open and close that, no problem. Yeah. So that was for us, we kind of went, I think we're there. Yes. Yeah. Now, in keeping in that same vein, we've got another addition to the launch series here. Correct, yeah, we have the launch 15. And this thing is really, really cool. So we've done some new stuff with this one, right? Yeah, we have. So we're talking micarta inlay on there. Yep, yep. Everyone loves micarta, and it's something that I always wanted to use more of. And just in some cases, it's not. It's too flexible. It doesn't work right. out. So for an inlay like this, works out perfectly and gives a little bit of texture. Um, you know, I was, I was talking to one of your other guys who works here in, in your department. He's saying, you know, it gives a little bit of grip, and he's right. Yeah, it does. You know, again, sometimes where aluminum with the anodizing can be a little bit slippery. That gives you that tactile feel. Yeah. And so we have OD green micarta inlays on the front and on the back. And then on this one, for the first time ever, we have a little backspacer made out of the same material as well to kind of tie it all in. And it's super cool looking. Like that's something different. I don't I don't know, and I'm sure someone has done it, but I don't know that I've ever seen a backspacer like out of micarta just like this. I think that's I think that's a really, really cool feature. Yeah. I won't say never been done before, but you know it's <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's it is it is a nice addition to this lineup and to do something a little different with them. Um, I'm calling this an American dagger. So yeah. if you look at like the Launch Eight, which is a, an, actually another Matt Diskin design, um, that one has that really slim Italian profile. So this one is one of our in-house designs, and it's meant to be more of a, a beefy kind of like an Applegate Fairbairn yeah um, kind of style design, a little bit wider, a little bit more of a of a I don't want to say the launch aid's not a user, but it's very slim, and this is a right. bit more of a, a little tougher, a little more of a yeah. tactical knife. And coming in with Magna Cut on the blade steel. Yeah, on, you know, I'm, I've neglected that. That's the first time for us as well as using Magna Cut. Yeah. So finally getting into that game. That's uh, super exciting. And of course, this is going to, you know, Kershaw is synonymous with a fantastic action on the outside autos, and this thing just pops beautifully. Um, so. I mean, that's, you know, obviously nothing to worry about. And reversible pocket clip, like we're used to seeing on the launch series. Yep. Um, especially the, the symmetrical ones, I will say. Yep. And, uh, I mean, just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Yeah. Um, very simple, good quality products, uh, good quality components to it. I mean, just, it's what we've come to expect from the launch series being dead nuts reliable. And, um yeah, this was really one where we hope it was an opportunity to say, hey, to the customers, we're listening. Because we, we have a lot of people asking, we want more micarta, we want Magna Cut, we want some of these different things. Yeah. And so it's nice to be able to wrap a couple of those into one knife. Absolutely. So this is, um, you know, as, as you know, we've, we, a couple years ago we came out with our Lucha series right. of, of butterfly knives. And we've had a lot of success with those. So something that we haven't had is, the Lucha is... Really, actually, a bargain knife for what it is. For a USA-made knife, it's it's very reasonably priced. Right. But we wanted something that kind of lets people get into the idea of learning how to flip at a much lower price point. Right. And so this is the Balanza. So we have an all black wash finish. We obviously we have a we have a steel training blade. Yep. And we've given a bit of a pattern in there to make it look cool, but also to yeah. to make it. We designed it so it was going to be about the same weight as a live blade would be. Right. Um, without the live mm. blade cutting up the fingers, which I've, <laughs> I've experienced more times than right. I have to admit. So, um, so we have a, so we have a uh, obviously steel blade, steel handles, and we have some lightning holes in those handles as well. Because I know that's the one thing about steel; it tends to get a little heavy. Right. Um, and the one thing that may be a little hard to pick up on cameras is that these have a really nice contour to them. Yeah. So. Can, yeah. There we go. Yeah. So. Really nicely contoured handles. They roll nicely in the hand. We do include a latch, but like the Lucha series, if you want to take these screws out, it right. is removable. Um, you know, for novices like me, I like the latch, so I know where I am. But I know a lot of the guys that are real serious about this. Right. Guys and gals um, like to be able to take the latch off. Yeah. So um, otherwise, yeah, this is just a much more affordable trainer, and I think it's going to be something that 
Helps well, people get into the sport. And we've seen like such a resurgence of people getting into ballot songs and, and butterfly knives and yeah. and competitions also. Oh, yeah. And we've seen these, like they were obviously really popular in the 80s. Um, and then we've seen a resurgence in the last few years, people really getting into this. And I think more affordable options, uh, opening that market up to yeah. more people, I think is is phenomenal. I absolutely love that. That is fantastic. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, these little, right little, here. Little family, okay. Yeah. Let's talk about this one first. I think this one's going to be really popular. This is the Iridium. Yes. Um, and this has a beautiful, beautiful satin flat grind on it. Um, for all four of these, we have, we have four new Duralocks that we've come out with. Uh, we decided that they'd all be little upmarket because that seems to be kind of where that, that customer is. So these are all D2 blades. Um, this one has a contoured aluminum handle. Again, it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but it has a little bit of a rounded contour to it. Um, it Which some, makes it, I mean, just feel great in the hand. Yeah. But it has those elegant, sleek lines. And I always say it, it takes a lot of thought to make something kind of simple that looks good. Yeah. It doesn't feel boring. And uh, so Josh and I were talking about this one, looking at it. And I, I got to say, I love the grind lines, especially making these different facets with that swedging up top yeah. and then that flat grind right there. Um, and being able to see those grind lines, just it, it looks sexy. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the contrast with the backspacer there. Yep. That, that little, it's funny because you know, it's a fairly large orange backspacer, but particularly on that front view, you just get that little hint of color. Yeah. And it just, it gives it some interest and some pop. Reversible pocket clip. Yep. I mean, it's yep. just... Deep carry. Yep. Um, yeah. I mean, there's not a lot more to say. And then you... Ambi thumb studs. It just works. It works yep. so good. And this is going to be a great feeling EDC. Um, it's going to be very durable. I, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, what this one does. And uh, so the handle material. The handle material is aluminum. Aluminum? Yep. Nice. So, and... I always ask that because I, I love seeing what people end up coming up with doing to their knives to personalize them. So that's going to yeah. open them up to all kinds of things that they can do with this. They can anodize it. They can do all kinds of stuff with yeah, it. Yeah, this has a lot of room for laser for personalization. Yeah. Put your oh, name absolutely. on it or a pattern or favorite sports team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty jokes. I've seen it all. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, so like I said, there are four of these. And I'm, I'll point out again... These are all completely ambidextrous. Right. You know, most of the time our knives are left-handed friendly, I call them, where it's a right-handed knife, but the, the clip is reversible. Right. And in this case, they truly are ambidextrous. It, it works either way. Right. Um, you can see I'm left-handed and I'm just comfortable as can be with these. Yeah. So the next one you have there is called the Heist. So, and, and again, we kind of split the difference here. We have two that are thumb stud openers, and we did two with flippers. Yep. Which is its own kind of challenge with a crossbar lock. Right. Um, but the heist is, ugh, I love this knife. I don't, it's, it's got that fine texture, um, but it's a grippy texture. Yeah. Um, again, it reminds me of some pistol grips and things like uh -huh. that. Um, and it's just grippy enough. It's not enough so that it digs in and uh, irritates you, but it's just enough to give you that confidence. Yep, it's not going to saw up your pants. Right. It's just enough to keep it from being slippery. It's got that real classic kind of, um, it's almost kind of a, modified clip point kind of style but it's, yeah. got a, but it's got a wide flat grind and again what what i should point out is that that's a real thin that's like a 90 thou blade yeah so it's very very slicey. super slicey so thinner than the iridium for example that's a, that's a real slim blade it's very light very comfortable the re reversible pocket clip nice big lanyard loop yeah um and yeah just i mean again some little details like that that cool triangle in the pivot yeah so that's that, that little triangle is kind of a theme that runs through these they all have the little triangular indentation on, yeah. the, on the crossbars. So I like that Small a lot. Small details to make them, yeah. what ways you can make them original. You know. And if you're looking for a crossbar lock and you don't want thumb studs, you would rather have a flipper, you can go to one of these two. Now let's talk about this one first out of these okay. two. So this is the covalent. And again, glass filled nylon scales on this one with, with a bit of texture in those pockets. Uh, we have a black wash finish on the blade, a D2 as we mentioned before. And again, Simple drop point style. It's got a nice contour to the, the shape of the handle, but it's not overly thick. Um, reversible deep carry pocket clips. And crossbar locks don't really lend themselves to flippers. Right. It can be a challenging thing to do. And so these two in particular, we spent a lot of time going back and forth getting the action right on these because they're not assisted. 
And so that's that's just that was a big deal to us is we want to make sure that geometry is right and that right. the detent feels right where you open it, no problem. So they're never gonna feel exactly like I mean like an RJ Martin with the really you know, with the, the rocket detent right. and that kind of thing. But I think they open really nicely. Oh yeah. Totally acceptable and in pretty much any position you can get them to Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get them to open nicely. Um, again, they've, that flipper is pushed forward, so you've got lots of leverage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so the covalent is is this guy right here, and um, yeah, just lots of little details, a little bit of texture. But again, really cool looking bag spacer right there. Mm -hmm. I really dig that. I, I like little details like that. I think that's fantastic. And then last but not least would be this one. This so. is the, this is the monitor, and you know I, I would say that name's more like the. More like the lizard, not the TV screen. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the monitor is is kind of the the more tactical style. And again, but you know, this is again meant to be usable. So we we have that ninety thou blade on this one. So super, super slicey. Super slicey. Yeah. Um, we have a glass filled nylon handle scale with a G10 texture. Um, fun little backspacer details. Reversible pocket clip, and of course, really smooth release. Um, and kind of a fun little pivot on this. A little bit yeah. different style on it. Just. Again, things to make it cool. Um, Absolutely. And these and are I love all actually quite are, affordable. I love that these come in with D2 on the blade steel as yeah. well. Um, I've told people, I don't know how many times, D2 is what I carry more often as a blade steel than anything else. I mean, I, I carry a lot of different blade steels. I love S35. I love all kinds. I've, I've got a couple of Magna Cuts, but D2 is what most of my knives are in. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it puts you in at a good price point. And D2 has been used in blades for so many years. It obviously works. It's been tried and yeah. true. And uh, I think that's uh, that's fantastic. All right. So um, up next, we, and, and we've got a lot of different ones. I, I really want to talk about this one. Okay. So this is somewhat unique. And I got to say, there's something about this knife that I am enamored with and that I'm drawn to. I was a couple that, that are really radical and very different. I have this interesting styling to them. Yeah. And I really dig this. It's It's got kind of a steampunk feel to it. Yep. And uh, D2 on the blade steel. And to begin with, when I first looked at this, I was like, well, what is this? It's just, it's just a random little dinghy that just sticks up there. No, it's a stop pin. <laughs> and I was like, that's awesome. It's brilliant. I love it. So, what's the name of this one? This one's called the Front Runner. And as you pointed out, this is a this is a bit of a you know it, it's this is a bit of a high end knife for this for this price point. But what it is is a it's a D2 blade with stone wash finish. And again, we have this real open construction, um, very kind of contemporary styling to it with right. all the cool overlays and that kind of cool. I think it's somewhere between a bronzy and a coppery color. Yeah. On those on those overlays. Um, that is a coating. It's not like a solid copper piece. But, okay. Um, but yeah, so this is manual action. It's running on ball bearing washers. It's got a really nice action. To yeah, it, it does. It, it flips yeah, really yeah. well. And you know, I think people are going to notice. Well, it's got this break in the handle there, and I just want to point out that that is backed up by the, the liners. It's very strong. Yes. So yes, it's kind of that it. illusion of of being something where it, it minimalistic. It, it yeah. Sh it shouldn't work, but it does. Right. And so it's it's just one of those things where it's. Definitely outside the norm and really fun. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it's a single position pocket clip because again, this is kind of an art piece. So right. You know, the pocket clip flows with the shape of the handle, so it doesn't yeah. reverse in this case. Um, which I think is one of the only ones out here that doesn't. And this one's going to be. It's technically, I would say, a frame lock. It is. Yeah. Um, it's a frame lock with an overlay kind of hiding yeah. it. So yeah. It, it all sort of you don't really see the lock doing what it does. Exactly. It's a bit hidden back there. And I think that actually that also will help with the action because a lot it of does. people have issues with frame locks, pinching it right here when they go to flip it open. Um, but that overlay kind of keeps you from doing that and yep. makes this action yep. really what it is. Yeah, if you turn around, it definitely has, why don't we show them the back again? It has it has that nice thing that keeps you off the lock bar and especially up here, you've got a little tab that yep. you can rest a finger on as well if you choose. So the lock bar is here and you can see it right there. And so when you actually go to open it, typically you're going to be right here and then you're going to bring this finger back. So your hands are going to be off that lock bar right there. And it's just, I mean, it just opens really, really nicely. And it's a really cool, like, little conversation piece. Like, 
and that's what I love about knives is it's it's pocket jewelry that you can you know you can personalize and have something unique that is you know works with your personality and I, yeah. I like having weird and crazy stuff yeah. and that's why I, that's why I think I love this. Well, you take some of these pieces and what they end up being is it's 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 a conversation piece and it's 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 kind of the knife equivalent of like a barbecue gun. Yeah. Like a fancy 1911 that you take out to show your buddies. Yep. It's all polished up and exactly. custom grips and custom machining. Yeah. So, same thing with these. It's something where you it's totally usable, but something you can show and talk with your friends about. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I love that one. And we've still got a lot of knives here. Let's talk about that uh this that big nice, fella here. That nice cleaver right there. Yes. I'm let you show this that. thing is cool. So I got I got to do this. <laughs> a nice reverse <laughs> flick on there because you can get uh, with that with that flat grind. It gives you a nice purchase on the bottom of that blade there, and you can just flick that sucker right open. I absolutely love that. It's like a, it's, it's like a gangster movie over here. It's absurd. It's <laughs> absolutely absurd, and I love it. I love the finger choil. So what is this one? This one's called the Strata Cleaver. So we did the Strata series last year where we had these just wildly over, oversized knives that were a bit more of, an, of a Nava, Navaja inspired style. Right. And they were just, I mean, the, the big strat, I think was a five inch blade or a five and a quarter. It was, it was, it was huge blade. And yet the neat thing about those was that they were slim enough that they would disappear in your pocket. And if you had deep enough, like I had deep enough pants pockets where even the big strata would go in yeah. and then you, you pull it out and I keep thinking it, it just kind of kept on coming. <laughs> yeah. And so this is in that family as well, except that this is a new cleaver style design. But as we were talking about earlier, it has really actually more of a straight razor feel. Yeah, it really does. Um, it, with that slim handle. Yeah, absolutely. And even, like, I think the finger choil actually helps that because it gives the illusion of that cutaway on the old straight razors. Exactly. And then you've got the uh, flipper tab right there. Yeah. Um, they kind of, again, gives the illusion of that friction folder kind of tail. Yeah. Um, so yeah, absolutely, I can see that. Yeah. So um, and again, this is this is a D2 blade, stone wash finish. Um, we have a solid G10 front handle here, and a, a stainless steel frame lock on the back. Um, and nice matte finish on that stainless steel yes. too. It yep. Looks very sleek. Yeah, I've always liked that kind of contrast. That we have another knife here that kind of does this, where it's it's a subtle contrast of the bead blast finish with the stone wash. Yeah. It ends up being something where it's a bit more interesting than just all bead blast or all stone wash, but it's not as boldly contrasting as right. a lot of other things can Absolutely. be. Absolutely. That's a really, really cool yeah. knife right there. I'm digging that a lot. So what have we got up next? Okay. Well, why don't we talk about um, this guy right here. All right. So this is called the Radar. So this is meant to be in that kind of smaller drop point, um, just a really comfortable everyday carry kind of knife. So. We have some. We have some of these. We're, the ones we're getting into now are more of kind of the everyday carry yep. um, kind of things. They're about. They're all in a similar size, um, similar kinds of construction. But again, this has that familiar steel construction where it's real slim in your pocket. Um, reversible deep carry pocket. Actually, I'm sorry. Quad carry deep carry pocket clip. So oh any, yeah, any, any we've got four a four positions. position. That's that's wow. That's amazing. We we don't we don't do that too often anymore because the pivots get so big on right. all of them. And so in this case, we made it work. Um, but just a nice, easy to carry drop point, um, nice, nice high hollow grind on it, so it's got a good slicing edge. Yeah. And yeah, just a simple, clean, um, assisted knife opening, so it yep. pops out there every exactly. single time. Very consistent. That's yeah. what I like to say about the assisted knives are always consistent. Yeah, absolutely. You get you get what you want. And this is a I love the blade shape. Um, this kind of falls. This is you know. It's a drop point, but it's it's one of my favorite blade shapes. It looks very sleek, almost like uh, airplane kind of yeah. kind of design right there. And uh, I really dig this. It's simple, and uh, it's going to be a nice sturdy frame lock. Going to be a great, like you said, EDC um, that you don't mind just pulling out and using, yeah. just using the crap Absolutely. out of it. Absolutely. So that's the radar. And then speaking of airplane design, I want to pull out the flyby here. Yes. <clears throat> you know, I think it's appropriate to have a Top Gun reference. And oh, yeah this lineup. So this knife really has that, you know, it's funny, I hadn't thought about it until recently, but this knife has almost sort of a, a stealth look to it. Yeah, it it's does. Got, it's, it's very faceted. That particular shape of the blade puts mm -hmm. you in mind of like a B117. Oh, yeah. Um, and even back to the handles where they have that real motion in them and the way they flow. Um, but the whole thing is just angular. So again, this is the flyby. And similar construction. Um, this is a 
8CR13 MOB blade uh, with black wash finish, and then we have a gray PVD on the handles. Um, kind of a simple pivot. We have that, that cool kind of design of the, the way the hole goes through the handle yeah. and it kind of mirrored on the back and works in with where the pocket clip fits in there. Um, just a clean, cool, um, yeah, everyday carry knife. And I it's love got, that one. It's got that low tip, so it's really, I really enjoy that sort of, I guess you'd call that like a long reverse tanto. Yeah. Um, but it just works so well for the things, I mean, you know, it's funny, I like things like, I print a lot of shipping labels and so I slap them on a, on a table and I just kind of cut around them rather uh -huh. than grabbing my scissors. Right. Because um, I'm lazy. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, or, you know, obviously we always talk. I, mean, I feel like every video I do now is like, we all open a lot of Amazon boxes. We yep. all open a lot of mail. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm always cutting open packages for my kids and that, that, style, that shape of blade where you have that low tip is just real, yeah. real functional. Yeah, absolutely. But that one just manages to look fast. It does. Kind of it really does. And I do like the cutaway um, uh, on the handle and being able to see that blade through there. I, I think that's really yeah. cool looking. Absolutely. Really digging that. So what's that one right there? Okay. So this guy is, um, this is the outcome. Yes. Oh, sorry. There you go. And um, so again, similar kind of deal. We have the stainless steel construction. This one, we have a full backspacer. Uh, HCR 13, and this is the other, the other one I was talking about where we have that bead blast on the handles and the stone wash on the blade. Yeah. Subtle contrast. Gives a little bit of interest and that, that nice kind of scratch resistant finish on the yeah. blade. Um, but again, having the clean, the clean silver look on the handles. Uh, reversible deep carry pocket clip, assisted opening, and these are all kind of in that three inch range. Yeah. It's kind of a nice, easy to carry. Um, not going to surprise anybody if you go to snip a string at the bank. Right. Know. And one thing that I love about these style with the with the stainless steel handles is going to be they're completely snag free. Yeah. You don't have any sharp edges. Everything's melted and really really nice. Um, and it just it's going to come out and go into your pocket yeah. really easy. Exactly. It's almost dehorned in a way. Yeah. It doesn't even have a lot of jimping on it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but at the same time, it feels really good in the hand. It's not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I love, love that design. And I love also, so it's important to note on a knife like this, you, you mentioned the full backspacer. So there is a little bit of texture on that backspacer and it sticks up just enough to add a little bit of confidence in that grip right there right. and to give you a little bit better purchase on that. Yep, exactly. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. And then, um, let's see. Let's talk about the shoreline. Yeah. So the shoreline is, again, EDC size, nice snap. I mean, Kershaw is known for assisted opening knives, so we are always very cognizant of making sure they have a really satisfying action when they yeah. open. Um, enough speed and, and um, yeah, just that they come out quick enough. That's fantastic. And, again, I love the detail on the backspacer right there. I think that's really cool. It's something that you guys didn't have to do, but you did it anyways, and it just looks really nice. It adds to the aesthetic. It's technically what it is. If you look, this this yeah. is kind of, again, you know, a lot of these knives have a heavier texture, um, and this one has a really fine texture. It's a bit of a departure, which I've, I'm really excited about, the way it feels. It's a grippy, but it's not overly so, and it has these little kind of L shapes that come into each other, and so then that backspacer mirrors what's happening on yeah. the handles as well. But we also have a fully contoured handle. Um, they are glass-filled nylon. Uh, Stonewashed 8CR13 MOV, three-inch blade, and a, a little a narrower profile than some of these other ones I'm going to talk about next. So it's it's again really easy to carry, reversible pocket clip. Yeah, just in that sweet spot of EDC knives, yeah. and, and just some subtle details on it. Yeah. Um, so then again, you know, we're talking about texture, and this one's got a little bit of a heavier texture. Nice. So. Um, so again, this one has our glass-filled nylon handles. Uh, we have a, in this case, a, a black blade. So this is this is more of a uh, more of a tactical look. Right. And um, again, a little heavier texture. I, I, I've been saying these look like seagulls, and my other designer is going to kill me. <laughs> it's a lovely, it's a it's a lovely texture, and it's it's really a nice kind of really more diamond shapes. Um, but again, it's got that nice kind of spear point blade. Little you see, it's like even a little heavier jimping versus right. like a lot of these have. That lighter jimping on them, that that finer yeah 
texture. So it's got that chunkier look about it. And I, I, this is another one that I, I really like this feature too. So you've got the uh, spacer here right there, the barrel spacer, but that it's also a lanyard loop, a lanyard hole. Yeah. Um, so I really dig that. I, I dig the way it looks. I dig the way it uh, it adds to the aesthetic. I think yeah. that's, a, that's a cool design feature. No, right I agree. There. So I, I didn't mention before, this one is called the Conduit, in case anyone's wanted to look this one up and find it later. Nice. Um, yeah, so just cool EDC with a bit more of a tactical style. Yeah. Love that. Absolutely. And then last but not least, I believe, I think that's, we're down to our last two here. Yep. Um, so we have two of these, so I guess you can pick one to handle and I'll handle the other one. All right. Um, we have the lateral. So the, we, have, we have two versions of this knife. Um, we, have, we have it with a black and a partial serration, and okay. we have a stonewashed with a plain edge. Okay. And so the lateral, again, is a bit, a bit of a throwback in a way, which you know, it may not seem at first, but we don't do much with a recurve blade anymore. Right. These are a little, a little bit wider, a um, little bit more of the old Kershaw style. Um, we have, again, that full flat grind, uh, full backspacer. Uh, we have a, we have a uh, glass-filled nylon handle with a G10 texture and an extra deep carry reversible pocket clip on these. Yes. So the thing I like about that, that recurve blade is that a lot of times things, cutting things like zip ties and rope, yeah. um, they tend to want to slip off the curvature of the blade. And so when you get them into that recurve, it just kind of yeah. forces them into that. And Exactly. I mean, as, as I'm sure nice most of your easy. customers already know. Yeah. But for those who may not, they're just and really handy for that kind of thing. Also, the one thing that's important to note about this one is the recurve is not um, super exaggerated. So it, it's very subtle, which means that this is not going to be as difficult to sharpen exactly. as a lot of recurves. Yeah. Um, that's, that's one thing that, I guess, pushes people away from recurves in general. Um, but this one is going to still be easy to sharpen, but you still get the benefits of a recurve. Yeah. Um, and, I mean... The, the benefits of a recurve, I mean, they exist because it, it's a tried and true blade shape. There's a yeah. reason why it was created. And yeah. uh, it's also got a really nice belly on it. I mean, you could even use this as a skinner if you wanted to. You really could. And then if you did, I, I will say along those lines, if you don't like sharpening recurves, you could go with the, for the one here with, with the... With the serrations. With the partial the serrations. Yeah. You can get those with a, with a diamond rod and it's a lot easier yeah. to go after them. And then you just have this much to get on your sharpening stone. Exactly. Or whatever sharpening system you happen to have. So they, uh, but they're just lightweight, comfortable, easy to carry. And again, if you prefer something like, I'd say like, you know, you have something like this knife where it's a little bit narrower. If you prefer, prefer a little more hand filling knife, a little bit more width to it. Right. You know, you have different options here. Yeah. Just super comfortable in the hand. Absolutely love that. And even with a bigger hand, it's still, it's still is hand filling and it fills all the way into the fourth finger. Right. So, so that is the lateral. That is awesome. Now, these are releasing mid-January. Mid-January. Right yep. around SHOT Show. Yep. Um, so when can we expect to see these hitting store shelves? Um, we are actually, these should be hitting store shelves within, I mean, as soon as we get them to the customers. So, right, so these should be right away. That's awesome. And yeah. I tell you what, you know, we talked about earlier this year and we talked about earlier today, um, about how you guys were, you know, splitting up your, your releases throughout the year yeah. and doing, you know, smaller releases. But uh, <laughs> I was absolutely not expecting <laughs> this many um, to come out at the beginning of the year. I was like, okay, so they're yeah. doing smaller releases. Unfortunately, we don't get as many <laughs> knives. Whoa, what? We are getting a lot of knives. And that's, I mean, that's obviously really exciting for us because yeah. we love seeing new stuff. Yeah. Um, this is the really exciting part of the job for me is, <laughs> is getting to see all the new stuff that gets to come out. So um, yeah. fantastic new offerings and a lot of really cool designs for everyone in the, uh, literally something for everyone yeah. in this release. And uh, I think that's fantastic. Again, Jim, thank you for bringing these to us and, uh, and showing these to us. As always, it's been a pleasure having you here in the studio. Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Absolutely. Folks, stay tuned for more from right here at SMKW. And remember, if it, if it carries, if it carries, really? If it cuts, <laughs> a brand new Kershaw out the front automatic. I'm just that excited about these. <laughs> I can't even talk plain. Then we carry it. If it carries, we cut it. <laughs>
I'm the spokesperson now, so I get to make it up as I go along. I'm sitting on this like a motorcycle, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's half the reason I don't wear a wedding ring. I, I even tried the rubber ones and they just gave me a rash, but I was like, honey, I hope you understand. Like, this this isn't gonna, <laughs> this isn't getting a bunch of women thrown at it, so don't have to worry about that. That's going in our outtakes. Oh, that is.